welcome to Kansas City as uh, the entire nation now joins us with the ACC championship game finally uh, ending up in uh, Tobacco Road. Rush with a shot off the corner. Couldn't get it. Ball knocked over into the far corner and taken away by KU again. Chalmers for three. Well, Mario Chalmers over 40%. He is not a goo guy, but a super goo guy because he puts stats on the board as well as make his teammates better. Damian James, who, by the way, picked up the foul in the first 15 seconds of the ball game, was handling the ball just a moment ago. Mason, back to James. He'll take a three-pointer, and he cans it. Picking up where he left off the last couple of ball games. And the whole season, Ron, he has really improved his outside stroke for a guy that's a hard-nosed player. Lob pass inside that's going to be a little too tall. One of the things that Kansas likes to do early, and that is their first turnover, is you look at Bill Self, they like to go into the big men early and very often early for they, that matter. They do, and yet in today's game, their first two shots have been jump shots. A little unusual for them. D.J. Augustine has said that in order for Texas to be great, A.J. Abrams has to get it going. Mason, that's a two-pointer. Justin, you remember Mason. how important actually Mason and James were in Austin, Ron? Well, the fact that actually was perfect. He was six of six in back-to-back turnovers against the Jayhawks here on possessions two and three. Here's what you have so far. Four possessions for Kansas. One contested shot, an open three, and two turnovers. Kind of interesting. They're running Mason off the baseline. They don't do this much during the season. I think they're trying to get Rush in foul trouble. Augustine, great move to the hoop. Misses the layup and taken down by Terrell Arthur. Jayhawks will run. Arthur, not there. Tipped away and Jacks, or Damian James will take it down for the Longhorns. This game is a game of great individual matchups today. Actually, in the three pointer and Mason as Texas starts off three of four. And one of the young men that really you don't look for as far as scoring, Justin, more of a defensive player and rebounder. Oh, you're absolutely right. In fact, he had eight, eight assists against Oklahoma State, so he does all the grunt work. Terrell Arthur inside. Bounces it off the glass and scores. And here is a young man that, for the last two ball games, has not really been himself, has not scored as much, and has fouled more often than usual. That's the key for him, staying out of foul trouble. Darnell Jackson reaches in and he picks up the foul. Kansas foul. Uh, number 32, Darnell Jackson, personal foul. Darnell Jackson will come out of the game and Sasha Khan will check in for Bill Self's Kansas Jayhawks. Play. They had what they wanted, and Mason missed this one from about a couple of feet away. Russell Robinson. Well, they got him. Long pass inside. Actually, will pick up the foul. But the Longhorns do not allow the alley-oop early here, but they pay for it with a personal foul. Well, that was a terrific IQ play by Darrell Arthur. He saw the mismatch, and they went right into Khan. Talking to the Texas coaching staff, Ron, one of the keys today in the half-court defense will be guarding the pick and roll. Kansas is as good as anybody in the country at bringing your big people away from the basket. How does Rick Barnes counter that? You'll see a lot of two-three zone from the Longhorns. I was just checking with Big E. They are not giving the foul to Ashley. They are giving that foul to Abrams saying that Abrams hit him first rather than Ashley who came in second and tried to finish him off and keep the shot from being uh, placed up. 8-6, Longhorns on top. Mason cut off as he tried to drive the middle. You remember what a great job Brandon Rush did yesterday on uh, Josh Carter. There's so many great matchups out here, particularly in the backcourt. Abrams had the ball partially blocked by Robinson. And touch last by KU. It'll be Texas ball with seven seconds on the shot clock. They're going to have 
after hurry actually looked up. Augustine is there. Two seconds down to one. He didn't get it off in time. Shot clock violation. When you have the quickness of Darrell Arthur, especially when a shot clock's going down, you should switch all ball screens. And that time he did a terrific job of making sure that DJ Augustine did not get a piece of the paint. Talks the switch out, Ron, and he's got the mobility to stay with him. Good job by Arthur. Tongue lashing by the head coach to both actually and also to DJ Augustine, saying you knew full well there were only seven ticks left on that shot clock. And if uh, you had to make something happen, you just couldn't stand around because when the pass came into actually, they waited for almost two counts before well, he got it off. Augustine had to run all the way from the baseline back out, but it was better defense by Kansas than anything else. Bounce from inside to Alexi Wanmani into the ball game. Had an outstanding day yesterday, but that ball partially blocked by Khan. Yeah, he's not going to be able to score as easily over Khan. Arthur got it. When he is on, he has got as good a low post game, especially finesse-wise, as anybody you'll see in college basketball. Actually, for three. That's his first miss this year against KU. And the outlet pass at the other end, Arthur. And we saw Darnell Jackson run the floor yesterday. That's tough to defend. Kansas goes on top, 10-8. About to hit the 15-minute mark of the first half. And this highly partisan crowd really making a lot of noise. Augustine off the mark with the shot. It'll be KU basketball and a timeout. Well, Kansas can hurt you many ways, inside and out. And they can especially hurt you when they run the floor, you see Darrell Arthur first posting and then finishing at the other end. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Phillips 66. Gasoline specially formulated to clean fuel injectors, increase performance, and above all, help maximize mileage. And in part by Pizza Mia Pizzas. Great pizza, great deal, every day, only from Pizza Hut. Championship week presented by Dick Sporting Goods continues with the Phillips 66 Big 12 Championship. It's the Kansas Jayhawks taking on the Texas Longhorns from the Sprint Center in Kansas City, Missouri. And let's check in with the third member of our broadcast team. Here's Holly Rowe. Holly? Well, guys, Kansas was out-rebounded yesterday by 10 against Texas A&M. So Darnell Jackson told me after that game, their round trip for today, box out. He pointed out that in the first meeting against Texas, Damian James out-rebounded the entire Kansas team in the second half. So today they have to be more aggressive. Bill Self said, hey, we got out toughed. That has to change today. And so far, the mantra is working. They're ahead on the board, 6-2. Three-pointer on the way. Chalmers knocks it down. Dangerous run. Kansas, Texas went to the zone. There's probably not a better team in the country that moves the ball versus the zone than the unselfish Jayhawks. Mason, strong to the hoop, but he scores two more. Mason. That had been a 10-0 run by Kansas until that basket right there by Mason. And by the way, Darrell Arthur, who has not had a good tournament so far, already has, as Abrams puts up a three and is off the mark, he already has as many points as he's averaged in the first two ball games. He has six. And actually, he's averaged six and a half in those two games. But I guarantee you, Bill he, Self said that is a welcome sight. Well, he's staying on the floor because he needs to stay out of foul trouble. Watch the ball movement. Sasha Khan assist Arthur. Nobody does it better, Ron, because they move the ball. They're unselfish, and all five can handle it. What normally is a weapon for Texas, the zone, it will not be today. Damian James off the mark. Sasha Khan will get the rebound as he battled with uh, Juan Mady. Rush for three. Yesterday, he may have been more aggressive than I've ever seen him in a KU uniform. He had a career-high 28. And boy, if he picks up where he left off with what else is happening, this is going to be a tough train to stop. Yep, this is the end of his career. He understands it. He's a junior, but he's coming out. Timeout. 
from Texas. She will step aside for 30 seconds. KU out and blazing. <laughs> Well, Kansas on top early. The ball movement has been outstanding. Texas goes to the zone. Now, watch Frieza when it comes to Chalmers. Keep your eye on Sasha Khan. Coach Knight would love this in the studio. Attack the zone from behind. And there it is, Sasha Khan getting loose behind the front line of the Longhorns. Arthur with the assist on that play, and it is an 18 to 10 ball game, and we're at the 13 minute mark. Augustine for three, got it. Big shot, Ron. He had been one for 15 against Kansas this year until that shot. That might get him going. Sharon Collins comes into the lineup, number four for the Jayhawks. Rush. Well, if you're a Longhorn fan, remember this. They got out to a 32-10 lead last year in the first half in Oklahoma City. Kansas, 80%, 8 of 10. Mason fouled by Chalmers. Rush yesterday, as, as I said, Fran and I both agreed, have never seen him more aggressive wearing a KU uniform. And one of the things that his coach is constantly telling him is, you got to play harder. Take more shots. Stop being selfish, or unselfish, I should say. Uh, and uh, yesterday, he took him in his word. You've heard me say this many times. A great player who is unselfish sometimes hurts your team. Pass inside to Axley. Jump hook is not there. One and out. Rush rebounded. Rush is back home also, for those that don't know, as he throws the ball away. And Mason, who was off to a great start, misses. But Abrams is there to follow. But I think Rush being at home here in Kansas City, plus the fact his coach is continuing to nudge him, and I think that both of those were a deadly combination. Well, I agree. And I think his teammates nudge him as well, Ron. They know how talented he is. That's the thing about this Kansas team. Seven different leading scorers this season. Russell Robinson, the bouncer inside. Darnell Jackson blocked by Atchley with both hands. Well, Connor Atchley's 15th straight game with a blocked shot. Mason. He knocks down another run. Boy, those are bonus points for Rick Barnes right now, Ron. He's got 10 already. Comes in only averaging about five or six. Rush, not there. And an offensive foul, a push. Foul number 32, Darnell Jackson. Darnell Jackson picks up the foul. Timeout, 21-18, KU. Cup holders. Researchers say is one of the top reasons women buy one car over another. Not horsepower, not available features like an 8-inch nap screen or black leather trim. Nope, cup holders. Maybe those researchers need a little quality time with a different kind of woman. <laughs> Visit your local Cadillac dealer for this attractive offer. ESPN Films presents Black Magic. In his final years at Kansas, basketball inventor Dr. James Naismith served as a mentor to young John McClendon. Naismith told him that the whole nature of basketball was to have activity. And the faster you could play, the more entertaining it was. McClendon went on to a successful coaching career that included three straight titles at Tennessee a and I. Black Magic debuts March 16th and 9 Eastern on ESPN. The two-day, four-hour film uh, tells the story of the injustice which characterized the civil rights movement in America as told through the lives of basketball players and coaches who attended historically black colleges and universities. And here you see some of my prominent uh, historically black, black college stars. And if you haven't seen, and I have seen this, Ron, Black Magic, it will touch your basketball soul. And 
One of my early coaching mentors, Al Adels, who played at North Carolina A&T, is in it. And we're talking about Bobby Dandridge, Dick Barnett, Zelmo Beatty. It's a great show. Shooting in the ball game for Texas. Mason, four of six, and the other five players, three of 11. So it's a seven of 17 start for the Longhorns. They've got Rush on Abrams, Ron. That's six, six, and five, 11. Actually, running jumper gets it. Boy, does he like that move. So now it's a one point ball game. After KU had a 10-0 run, and the most important thing here, Fred, might be it has taken the crowd out of this ball game. There's a whistle and a foul, and this will go against the Jayhawks. You know, and take a look at this now, Ron. This is old-school basketball right here. Connor Ashley, this is not a one-time thing. He has perfected this running hook. You don't see that very much in the college game. That foul was against Cole Aldridge, his first, and the team's fourth. About to go under 10 minutes to play in this opening half, and it's been fast and furious, slowing down just a little bit now. KU with a one-point lead, 21-20. And I think the pace is good for Texas. Augustine, and he got it. Let me ask you as KU comes back up the floor. Normally, it is not the chore of uh, Justin Mason. He's normally a screen and defensive guy, and even rebounding. Number 14, are they riding him the same way that they do the other folks, or are they going to have to change their defensive strategy? Yeah, I don't think they'll change because I still think the focal point of their defense will definitely be Augustine and Abrams. And what you have to do if you're Bill Self, Rod, take the calculated gamble that will play Mason straight up. And if he goes and gets 20 points, he can't be in trouble. Okay, so you got to stop Augustine and Abrams. The youngster, as I said, who normally doesn't score that much, comes up with 10 points inside of 10 minutes. It's a great matchup that we just saw. Abrams, excuse me, Chalmers and Augustine. Three-pointer off the mark. I think Ashley is over the back. That's going to be the call. Here's a good time to point out Gary Johnson will not play today, Ron. So when Rick Barnes goes to that bench, It'll be a host of young players. There's Gary on the bench. First foul on uh, Connor Ashley. Collins tries to dish it off inside and it loses it out of bounds. Holly Rowe. Well, guys, Gary Johnson injured his lower right leg two days ago. They tried to have him play today. He came out in warm-ups, tried to warm up with the team, but he just couldn't do it, had to limp off the court. This really hurts them because their depth on their bench, especially for big men, are young players. Sophomore Pittman, who's in there now, and two freshmen, so depth could be an issue for the big guys. Boy, how much has this guy gotten better, Ron? Thanks so much, Holly. Uh, Bill Self came right up and called a timeout. After the 10-0 run, now Texas is on top, 24-21. The graphic as far as the depth and it, look how many minutes these Texas Longhorns play. And that's one of the reasons Rick Barnes will utilize the zone so much. You can actually catch your breath a little bit more in the zone than you can man to man. Doesn't mean you don't play hard, but you don't have to move around as much. And I'll tell you, you know, you, you talk about Kevin Durant and all the great players that have come through Texas in the last couple of years. And, and Damian James, Ron, remember, he was a high school All-American. You've mentioned it many times how he took a back seat. Exactly. To, uh, to Kevin Durant. And just to get this in quickly, you know, here's some reasons why you do play zone. You mentioned save energy. It's also easier to scout. And actually, zones are good in tournament play because you don't have as much time to prepare for the opponent's man-to-man -man stuff. Showtime is back in. Longhorns with a three-point lead. Robinson driving toward the hoop. Did not use the glass, and he missed the shot, and it's tipped back, and it's Texas basketball. Dexter Pittman in the ballgame, the 299-pound sophomore, 6'10 <laughs> for Texas. You sure it's not 301 or 298? <laughs> Could be as D.J. Augustine gets the jumper, and Texas has hit their last six shots.
And there you see the zone now. Now the danger is, and we talked about it earlier, how well Kansas moves the ball. The coverage is going to have to be better. There's your inside that you're yep. talking about one more time. And a foul on Khan. Opportunity for a three-pointer. One of the things you must do when you play that 2-3 zone, when the ball goes to the high post, Best let's go now. Freeze it at the top right there. Freeze it. These guys have to pinch in, and you've got to cover this area here. Look how wide that back line is of the Longhorns and Sasha Khan. I don't know how you sneak behind a defense when you're 6'11", but Sasha Khan has managed to do it twice. Well, right now, Ashley has had to sneak over to the bench because he's got two fouls, and we still have 8.28 to play in the first half. And that means that uh, Juan Maney will come off the bench, the freshman, and have to come back into the lineup. Yesterday, as we said, he had an all-star day for him, one of his best ever with, what, seven points. But today, a little different situation as far as the number of big men that he's going to have to face. No, I think you're absolutely right. James misses. Ball tipped. And it's going to be KU basketball. And, and in fact, Ron, it's a great point because you don't see Juan Maney and Pittman out on the court very much for Rick Barnes. That moves James to the three. And it's a little different way than Rick Barnes normally plays it. They're in the zone again. Deep in the corner. Rush. Little short, but Con rebounds. Robinson goes to Khan, back to Robinson, long three in and out, tipped back out and taken away by Abrams. A.J. Abrams, spin move, lost the ball and picked up by Khan. Two turnovers, Texas. Chalmers. Robinson and Chalmers in transition, especially off a of steal. That's where Kansas can be lethal. Chalmers. Chalmers, yep, you see it? Poked it away, didn't he? Now watch this, Ron. Watch the other end. The finish. We'll take a timeout. 27-26, Texas. The brewers of Guinness Stout are circulating a petition to make St. Patrick's Day an official holiday. As a national holiday yourself, how do you feel about that? Yeah, I'm really scared. Is that what you're asking me? Am I shaking in my square-toed shoes? Is this guy for real? Do you know who I am? Have you seen my parade? They shut down Central Park West for my parade. I have floats. I'm a big deal. Big balloons. Please drink responsibly. This telecast is available on ESPN HD, presented by Olivia, live and in color. Ron Franklin, Fran Frischel, and Holly Rhodes. Speaking of Holly, let's check in with her. Holly? Well, Bill Self just told his team in the huddle that on defense, hey, guys, just have to understand they're shooting the heck out of the ball right now, but you still have to guard somebody. On offense, he said, hey, our only way our zone offense is going to work is if you get the guy at the bottom of the zone to guard you. He thinks they're playing too high in their zone offense. He wants everyone to settle down, make that lowest guy guard him. Okay, that's a, Holly. That's a great point, Holly. When James, when James comes out on the that's floor from the back line, that opens up the area behind him on the short corner. Gonna make Holly an assistant coach someday. 27-26. <laughs> Longhorns by one. About to go under seven minutes to play. Opening half. Boy, KU came out at a blistering pace and just was not missing anything as Augustine, speaking of not missing, KU had eight of what, their first ten shots. But uh, the biggest thing by what Texas has done, as we mentioned once already, and that is taking the crowd out of the ball game. Yeah, that's a great point, Ron, because Kansas midway through this first half was about to blow, blow the doors open. But little guys at home, when you're watching this shot by DJ Augustine, this is a practice shot. That's a little fall away runner, but in order to get really good at that, you've got to have good body balance, and your follow through must be exactly the same as if you were shooting a stationary shot. Alexi Wanmany picks up the foul. It's his first, and the team foul on Texas is six, so one away from the bonus. And Russell Robinson is gone to the bench as Rush hits another three, and Sharon Collins is back out for the Jayhawks. Now that was an excellent set play by Bill Self. That time they screamed. James inside the lane. Juan Maney with the screen. 
Damian James, the runner, short arm that one, and taken away by Collins. Out of the wing to Chalmers. Three pointer on the way, and he misses it. You got to keep your eye on Sharon Collins right now if you're Rick Barnes. He is Kansas's caffeinated drink, if you will. You talked during the timeout, and you said to me, as Augustine shoots a long three right in front of Bill Self, and Bill was offended by the fact that was shot right in front of him, I think. He made, uh, the, the point I was, I was going to make is you said during the timeout, though, right now Rick Barnes needs to make it to halftime with what not happening. Well, in foul trouble. He can't have anybody else getting foul trouble. And, and that's the dilemma, Ron, because it's hard to play man-to-man -man when you're worried about foul trouble. But this team is so good versus zones that they can shoot you out of the game as well. Folks, we are tied again, this time at 32. And I mean, both of these teams are just shooting the lights out of it. Does anybody have any idea how good D.J. Augustine is right now? Unbelievable shooting, and he's a point guard first. That's the amazing thing. Rush for three. Oh. <laughs> you know, you said yesterday after the game was over that Rush made a lot of money yes. in yesterday's game. And he's making game. more. And that's because <laughs> of all the scouts that are here? Absolutely. Everybody knows he's coming out and declaring for the draft. NBA scouts are intrigued. Dexter yes, Pittman's sir. gonna be a good player, Ron. He is so light on his feet for a guy 299 and a half. That's hard to believe. <laughs> well, 299 and one cheeseburger. That's <laughs> oh, yeah, without without the cheese. No ketchup. No mayo. About to hit four and a half minutes left until halftime. Falling down. Chalmers gets the jumper to go. And I'll tell you, that is now 14 points for him. Rush has 12. 16 for Augustine and 10 for Mason. Well, Chalmers is greedy because he wanted to foul, too. Johnny Higgins wouldn't go for it either. No. Would he? But this game is so well played right now. Collins against Augustine. Augustine cuts in the middle. Inside, Mason misses, but he'll go to the line for a couple. Oh, man, you're seeing basketball at its best in the Big 12. Take a look now. Look at Augustine get into the lane. And Mason goes hard, and that's the toughness plays that Texas made in Austin. That's team foul number five. It's the first foul on Sasha Khan. Shot on the way, and he gets it tomorrow night at ESPN, 7 o'clock Eastern. ESPN has the exclusive unveiling of the NCAA Women's Basketball Championship brackets with the NCAA Women's Basketball Selection Special. That's tomorrow evening. It is 7 o'clock Eastern time. Coming back at the ballgame is the freshman Cole Aldridge. Sasha Khan will go to the bench. And repeating what Fran said yesterday, and I think it's really interesting, that a scout told you that Sasha may play longer than anybody on his team in the NBA? Unless Brandon Rush keeps playing like this, Ron. <laughs> but Sasha, Sasha Khan is your classic NBA 12-year backup center. He's got size, strength, good IQ. He'll be at every practice. You won't have to worry about him being in uh, places he shouldn't be. Arthur got it. That's the first basket in the last five that has not been a tray by KU. And a sweet move by Darrell Arthur, who's kept himself out of foul trouble in his first half. Tell you what, he moved so quickly. He saved Juan Manny a foul because he was about to come down on top of it. That's a good matchup now. Rush is a good defender and a terrific shot blocker for his size. Cole Aldrich comes out as a double on Augustine. Bouncer goes into Juan Manny. He works against the freshman Cole Aldrich. Not sure he wasn't fouled, but the ball at least partially blocked, and the shot was short. Chalmers. Back to Aldrich, cross court with a skip pass, and Collins takes it into the middle and scores. Oh, you talk about knifing in the middle. He thought he could get to the right side of the basket, was cut off and shifted to the other side. Arthur, I think, hurt himself. He is limping badly right now. now this is a big possession for Texas. And this is what I love about DJ Augustine. He's so good at understanding the pace of the game. Arthur is grabbing at his knee. Shot clock is down to 10. Augustine takes it in the middle, but there was a whistle. 
Collins will pick up the foul. It's going to be his first. And the team's six. 38-42. DU. Cisco Halftime Report. Steve Lavin, Jimmy Dykes, clean, crisp, concise so far. If Texas wins, they're number one seed. If Kansas wins, let the great debate begin between Kansas and Tennessee for that final number one seat. You're still on the Bruce Pearl band. No, I'm, not, I'm, I'm going with Fran Frischilla, possibly the next Providence coach. He likes Kansas. If he likes Kansas, that's good enough for me. Kansas depth will be the difference in this game. All right, so you got Frischilla going to Providence. Where does Frischilla have Lavin going? Let's find that out. We'll see Somewhere, you I hope. On the Somewhere. Cisco Halftime Report. Back to you guys. I, I, I have him going to the restroom to wash out his mouth. We, we don't want to start that rumor right now. We got a lot of basketball there, to play. There's a good JUCO in Cal Northern California that I got a spot open for Steve, but I, I think he's going to be smart enough to stay right where he is. Listen, here's a number that both of these coaches we were talking. Both of these coaches get so much out of their teams and also have selfless teams. Kansas has 15 assists on 16 field goals. Six players already with an assist in his first half. Isn't that amazing, right? Yeah. And you're talking about high-level all of American type players who are supposed to have big egos. That's the uh, incredible thing about the unselfishness. And the Longhorns have hit 15 field goals and they have 10 yes. assists. Yes. And they're not going to have as many assists when you have the dribble penetration game of DJ Augustine. James Four left alone and he Four knocks eight, down eight, the three. And that makes it a one point ball game. Because of Durant and Augustine, Damian James may be the most underrated great college player in the country. You know, I'm, I want to talk also about what Jimmy said as far as being a first or a number one seed. For starters, I disagree because the lateness of this game, I, I don't see the committee changing that. And secondly, I'm not so sure Texas wouldn't be better off to be a second seed and be the number one second seed. Little Rock and then right. Houston. Well, that's a good point. And uh, Jimmy, Jimmy makes the point that uh, the winner of this league will certainly be worthy of a number one seed. I think Texas would love the number two seed in the South so they can stay in Houston. Augustine. Unbelievable. And those are two really uncontested shots. And Bill Self is really angry at his ball club. That's exactly what he's telling them. You know, that's the most underrated thing in basketball, Ron, is contesting shots. Now, take a look at this. Augustine is at NBA range. And if he keeps playing like this, this is where he'll shoot from next year. But watch. See, there's no contest right now. you got to get up and play him. The problem is if you play him too hard, what's he going to do? Put Go it, right by you. Go right by you. Now, and take a look at this. Now, this is an unofficial S-curve, and I'd like love to get Jimmy and, and Steve's reaction back in the studio afterwards. You, you see what they do now. The S-curve works like this, so that if Memphis is the fourth number one, Texas would be the first number two, Tennessee the second number two, and so on and so forth. And I think Texas would love to stay in the South, because that means, Ron, that in the second, uh, the third and fourth rounds, they would have a chance to go to Houston and be close to home. It's going to be interesting to see how the committee does that. I don't have the figures, but I think that that probably is the largest alumni base for the Longhorns in the country. So that that would be a natural for them. Collins back out on the wing. Chalmers for three. He got it. Chalmers now with 17 points. You know, with most college teams, a team that shoots this many threes, you almost look at it as fool's gold. Not with Kansas. They can hurt you both inside and out, and you have to pick your poison. Crowd coming up. I mean, everybody is standing, trying to become a six man, if you will. James, two pointer, uh, swishes it. This, Ron, this is about as well played a first half of basketball as I think we've done all year. It's not a matter of mistakes being made as much as guys are stepping up and making great plays like we've seen the last couple of years in this game. Shooting percentages, particularly for Kansas, extremely high in the first half. But in the last eight minutes of the first half, Texas is almost on that same uh, uh, hit list. Locked inside. Mason got a hand on it, and it's going to stay with KU. How about Justin Mason? Six foot three. Rick Barnes calls him his garbage man, his junkyard dog. 4.4 seconds on the clock. Collins to pull the trigger. 
does. Three pointer on the way. Rush all too hard off the back iron. And on the floor, we are at halftime. And what a first half we have been treated to. Five ties, nine lead changes. And let's take a look at the star watch that we gave you off the top of the telecast, friend. I mean, what do you think, Ron? It's not too hard to pick these two guys. What a brilliant first half by both players. So let's go down to Holly Rowe. Holly. Coach, you guys went down by eight points. You called a timeout there in the first half. What did you say because you came out and hit six straight? Well, no, I just thought that, um, to be honest with you, I don't remember what I said at that point in time. <laughs> but the one thing that we, we wanted to really in the first half, keep it right where it is right here. We didn't think we could come in here and win this game in the first half. That's why we stayed zone. Hopefully they've used up most of their threes right there. But uh, our guys showed a lot of poise. They stayed with it. And uh, we just got to come out and we'll probably play a little bit more man this half, but maybe not. All right. Thanks, Coach. <laughs> thanks, Holly. Thanks, Rick Barnes. These two teams have staged some real wars, and they got another one going today. Texas by one. Now let's join Carl Ravitch, Jimmy Dykes, and Steve Lavin with the Cisco Halftime Report. Gentlemen. Thank you very much. Thanks, Rick Barnes, the Big 12 Coach of the Year, for joining us there before the halftime speech. Clemson and North Carolina, the ACC championship game already played, seen on ESPN. As Roy Williams looking to make it number eight in school history as far as postseason tournaments go. Championships, look at Hansbrook. That is a spare leave as he wipes out eight of the pins on the sideline. Psycho T. Later in the first half, UNC is up by one. Green, Ellington, money. Carolina by six at the break. One thing about Clemson, they'll scratch, they'll claw, they'll dig. Here, a ball on the floor. Cliff Hammonds, ahead of the field. Layup, other end is good. Clemson with some speed demons. They have a lot of dog in, and what kept Clemson this ballgame for a long time was their ability to make threes. But North Carolina, attack, 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 and eventually, they got the best of Clemson. UNC up by six. Ellington, hands for a part of the hole. Gets well, it to go. North Carolina with a number of shot makers, playmakers, the best starting five in the country. The Tar Heels right there with the Texas Longhorns. Right, Carolina will be a one seed. So will Memphis. So will UCLA. Circle Kansas. These are Joe Lenardi's number one seeds projected. He did say on our show earlier today, if it were his choice, he would put Tennessee as a one seed if Kansas beats Texas. If Texas beats Kansas, he's got some other things that uh, he would go with as far as the machinations. S curves from Fran Fraschilla, Lenardi's. Jimmy, what are your thoughts? I'm going with the common sense index. Oh, Here's why. If, if Texas wins this ball game, they will be the fourth number one seat. If Kansas wins, you have to look at the body of work for both these schools between Kansas and Tennessee right now. Look at the number of wins for Tennessee, and they have 11 of them that we couldn't put on the graphic that are against teams that will be in the NCAA tournament. Look at the top three, though. Memphis, Xavier, and Vanderbilt, all in the top 12 in the RPI. Kansas' best win, guys, coming into this game today against Oklahoma with a 27 RPI. Right now, Tennessee they've been thrown under the bus in the conversation for number one. I think it's too early. If Kansas wins, the, the great debate begins. Forget about the orange blazer and what you think about Bruce Pearl and the Tennessee style. Will they get to the final four? It's about their body of work, and Tennessee has to be in that conversation. And also, in fairness, you have to admit that you are number one on Bruce Pearl's MySpace <laughs> as his best friend, and he should be Just after this weekend. Nothing against Bruce Pearl, but when you look at this big picture, I think you could build a case that even if Texas loses in the championship game, they're still deserving of consideration as a one seed. The bottom line, the Big 12 championship postseason winner is going to end up being the one seed. Look at Texas, though, having beaten UCLA at UCLA. They've beaten Tennessee head-to-head. -head. Also a win over Kansas is going to end up a one or a two seed. So those three wins right there over one or two seeds and a conference regular season piece of the championship and now in position in the championship. Tennessee lost to Arkansas. Bottom line, that knocked them out. That's not a bad loss, though. Arkansas has been back-to-back -back NCAA tournament. What happened, but they're not the, playing. what happened to the big they're not fight playing. when Tennessee beat Memphis? Why Memphis? is Duke that out was of for a number one Because Duke seed. got knocked out. I'm Why is saying, Duke no longer in the you mix? You better look at Tennessee. you got to win late. To be looked Jimmy, you got to keep winning. thrown underneath the bus. you got to keep winning, pal. They, they didn't win. you got to keep winning. They won enough of the They're sitting home season. watching, and we're talking about here's it. They're what I, sitting here's home. what I got out of it. I know. I love it. But here's what I got out of it. you got to keep winning, and you got to watch Tennessee. We'll do both. All we'll right. take a time out here. <laughs> That's the number one seed. A little bit later on, boy, the old committee sitting there wondering if their arguments will be nearly as animated and informative as that one. Who's bursting the bubble? We'll come back right after this. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Dick Sporting Goods. Every season starts at Dick's and Mercedes-Benz, located on the web at mbusa.com.
which teams will be granted a spot in the bracket? Who will be left out in the cold? They got a raw deal. 65 schools have a chance to cut down the nets. Our team will prepare you to pick one champion. ESPNU Bracketology, tonight at 7 on ESPN. This is the Cisco Halftime Report. Not sure if you guys won uh, Emmys, but certainly Academy Awards for that acting. That was outstanding, and more of it is coming up. Our game, Texas by one. Augustine's got 18. They lead Kansas looking for a one seed. you got to keep on winning. you got to keep on winning. That's what Georgia hopes to do, because if they don't, they won't make the NCAA tournament. Nice interior passing. Billy Humphrey, Dave Bliss, plus the foul. Georgia out 10-3 early. This is all about the passion that Georgia's playing with today. Again, Dennis Felton, his AD, was following him around for about three weeks, trying to build a case to fire Dennis Felton. And look what the Georgia look Bulldogs at the have done. Inspired North wow. Carolina State Wolfpack. Reminds you of Jimmy Valvano's crew. Second life, a new, fresh start, new beginnings. And a nightmare for those on the bubble if Georgia gets in. It would be doubly worse if the Illini can beat Wisconsin. First one to 30 wins. Let's find out what happens. McKinney with a steal. Coast to coast for the jam. Tying this one up at 10. Later, Wisconsin's lead is three. Methodical, deliberate, disciplined, balanced as we see Brian Polar Bear Butch bury one from distance. Six foot 11. By five, 25, 20. All right, so the last four out, boy, they would not be pleased. Neither perhaps would Oregon, Arizona, Villanova, Virginia Tech, if you're going to introduce Georgia into this discussion as a team that gets in. Woo! The bubble is getting crowded, and it looks like, I mean, boy, Georgia would really need to melt down to lose that, so that's another spot that's gone. They're going to take somebody's. Now, again, you look at those teams right now, those last eight that are fighting it out to try to get a spot. They all look alike. Think about this. Arizona State beat Arizona head-to-head -head twice, yet in the latest projections, Arizona's in and Arizona State is out. I don't believe it. But the entire country, the bubble teams, are not cheering for Georgia right no, now. Well, building on Jimmy's point, Arizona State finishes 9-9 nine and nine in the Pac-10 ahead of Arizona. They switch sweep Arizona and they have wins over Xavier and Stanford who will be top four seeds in the NCAA tournament. How Arizona State is not in the field of 65 needs to be looked into. I think Joe Lenardi may have been bribed by the good fellows of Philadelphia, the Sopranos, with a lifetime supply of Philly cheesesteaks. We need to investigate if St. Joe's is in, but Arizona State is out. That sounds like you're just feasting on the Pac-10, trying to get Arizona and trying to get ASU and you're dumping on St. Joe's. Well, That's no, West Coast no, bias. It is That's the West Coast bias. It is is the toughest conference in the country right there with the Big East. The no, no, no. The Big East is better, but your point about them beating Xavier is very well taken because you know who else beat Tennant? Who at Xavier? Uh -oh. Tennessee Here won it goes. at Xavier. Bruce so Pearl, you, you best friend. Once again, you're thank the you. best friend MySpace. You He's texting again. you right now. You fell for it. You're just, Xavier. You're just, you just sold they won out. At Xavier Jimmy. and that Gonzaga. Come on, guys. <laughs> Commissioner Gordon uses a red phone pearl on the orange. That's <laughs> suspenders, <laughs> body paint. Unbelievable. Uh, Carnival but you know what you did? You brought it the truth. full circle. He can't full accept circle. the truth. Big 12 Second champion, half. number one seed. Oh. Coming up. This halftime report is presented by Cisco. Welcome to the Human Network. This halftime report is presented by Cisco. Welcome to the Human Network. Lakers and Rockets. Houston looking to make it 22 in a row. Kobe Bryant's got 11. No Paul Gasol in this one. It's being seen on ABC. They're in the second quarter with 8.28 to go. Tiger Woods also trying to continue his winning streak. Sports Center will be in between the bracketology shows. Ticket punched. Texas Arlington advances as the three at the buzzer falls short. So they are now a member of the NCAA tournament field. 82-79, the final score there. Good game that was seen on ESPN2. You'll be able, folks, to get all your Bracketology news beginning at 5 o'clock Eastern time. 5 for Bracketology, 6 for Sports Center, 7 o'clock to put it all in perspective, start filling out the brackets. No foul trouble yet except for Connor Axley with two. The game is won. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Dick Sporting Goods. Every season starts at Dick's. Leadership continue at a level a cut above the rest. For two straight years, Kansas outlasted Texas in thrilling heavyweight battles. Their rosters are a collection of all-conference honorees who come through time and time again and will pounce at the chance to define their moment. And that moment is now. 
Championship Week presented by Dick Sporting Goods continues. Welcome back to the Phillips 66 Big 12 Championship. We're at the Sprint Center in Kansas City, Missouri. And our halftime score, 46-45, the Texas Longhorns on top. And we're going to have to make this short and sweet because the officials are lining up right behind us. Second half, you look for more of the same, or what is the biggest change you think has to happen? Oh, gosh. I mean, both teams, are, I think, coaches are worried now about what to do to stop each team they've been so hot but we're so spoiled Ron because we've seen Kevin Durant Julian Wright and now DJ Augustine this this first half performance was as good as you'll see anywhere four different Jayhawks trying to shut down DJ Augustine not able to do it and then if you play the drive he can kill you from deep Good look at DJ right there as the Longhorns will go on offense first to begin the second half of play. Individual scoring, 18 for Augustine, 12 for Mason, 10 for Dania James, 17 for Chalmers, 8 for Darrell Arthur, and 12 for Brandon Rush. And Mason not only with 12 points, Randy has five assists in the first half. Now he is their blue guy. Abrams, left hand, got it. Boy, that's impressive, Ron. A.J. Abrams, only one for three in the first half. Biggest improvement in his game has been his ability to get inside the three-point arc and hit those mid-range shots. See the zone now. Kansas moved the ball very well first half. Rush, strong, actually made the block, and that was taking quite a chance. He did it with two fouls. He is such a good shot blocker, Connor, actually. Much improved in every aspect of his game. Mason, they double on him. They get it off to Ashley. I think so far, Rod, Texas has taken the crowd of 16,000 out of this game. Abrams, long three, barely drew iron on that one. And the outlet pass, Russell Robinson overthrew him. We talked about A.J. Abrams being a prolific three-point scorer, but take a look now as he gets into the lane off the dribble, and he's 5'11", 155, and that's a pretty physical front line by Kansas. Well, a grimace on the face of Bill Self across the way. That's the eighth turnover against the Jayhawks, and not the way he wanted to open the second half of play. Quick pass inside, but quick hands by Darrell Arthur, and almost a save. Diving down onto the floor, Abrams, turnover number three, Texas. Tonight's first half stats brought to you by Guinness. And one of the things you don't see there is Kansas 9 of 15 behind the arc. The assist and field goal ratio, 16 of 17, absolutely outstanding. Darrell Arthur back out on the wing. Chalmers for three more. In and out, unlucky on the shot. That one did everything but go down. Remember what Rick Barnes told Holly Rowe at halftime, Ron? They might go man, and yet they might stay zone. That ball blocked by Rush. Augustine went down hard, but he's back up and in the corner. Abrams out the run. That one will not stick. Rush with another rebound. Well, that was a tough shot by A.J. Abrams. It's a very good defensive backcourt. Arthur deals it off. Jackson off the mark. Ashley rebounds. Mason out on the wing. Abrams, no. Arthur rebounds. And Rush at the other end, sure thing. Offensive foul, no. No basket. And well, that was an easy play. Brandon Rush never turned this into a two-on-one. He needs to get wider. Let's freeze it for a second. You see, he's got to go sideways to create a situation where Augustine has to play him or Robinson. When he stays in the middle of the floor, Ron, it's very easy for Augustine to stay and hold his ground. Brandon, it's interesting. Uh, they take away the two points and the foul. Only the first on Brandon Rush. But for two teams that shot KU 58.6, Texas 58.1 in the first half, both teams coming back down to earth just a little bit here to open the second half. Well, you would expect that. I think the, the underrated thing about the first half, it's so difficult to play at such a high skill level. 
in a pressure-packed game like this. Mario Chalmers picks up his second foul. But Ashley, who is at the line, as we mentioned to you a few moments ago, also he's playing with two fouls. One thing we haven't seen from Connor Ashley tonight is his ability to stretch the defense from behind the arc like he did in Austin on February 11th. Second one on the way misses that one. You see, Ron, despite the hot shooting of Kansas, Rick Barnes said he would probably stay zone, hoping that Kansas pulls off. Skip past a rush in the middle, Arthur. Let's check in quickly with Holly Rowe. Holly? Well, guys, I caught up with Bill Self at halftime. He said that first half was about the best he's ever seen. But he said it's great if you're a fan, agonizing if you're a coach. He said their perimeter defense has to get better. They have to force them to shoot harder twos. He said particularly their ball screen defense on the perimeter has to get better. Okay, Holly, that uh, foul was on Augustine, and that is his second foul. Normally something that is not a problem. He's a good defender, but uh, he keeps his hands off the body. Well, that time uh, he got caught. He's the one irreplaceable Longhorn because they don't really have a pure backup point guard for him. You see Mason brings it up, but Augustine will handle the ball 80% of the time for the Longhorns. Well, they're trying to trap the ball out of his hands now. Abrams for three. Off the mark. Yesterday was his hot day, and today he's uh, back on the cool side. That's a good point, Rod. He came in yesterday, two for 17 behind the arc. And then wound up canning seven threes in the ball game yesterday against Oklahoma. Today, he only has four points. In the middle, Kahn actually tries for the block. Second shot is missed. Abrams rebounds. Well, you see the ball movement just as good, but this time they come up empty. Here goes that same situation. They go out and try to trap on Augustine. Bouncer to the hoop, James, and he is knocked down by Sasha Khan. So we'll take a timeout. 49-47, Texas by a couple. We'll be right back. This telecast is available on ESPN HD, presented by Olivia, live and in color. Second and a half shooting after both teams shooting over 58% in the first half. KU 0 for 5, Texas 1 for 6. And you would expect that to happen. And uh, Rick Barnes said to Holly Rowe that he would uh, play some more zone, hoping that Kansas would cool off, and they have. Well, the best seasons under Rick Barnes, 30 and 7, the Elite Eight in 06, 2008, he's at 28 and 5, and of course the question mark is there. And I think the 03 season was really the watershed mark for Texas basketball. TJ Ford's team, that started a plethora of McDonald's All Americans heading to the 40 acres. Well, you saw what Texas tried to counter with there as James puts up a three and misses, and Mason is fouled by Arthur. But when they came out with the double team, then the screen man headed for the basket, yes. and he had to come off the double team. Well, that rebound by Justin Mason, Ron, very reminiscent of we, what we saw in Austin in the second half where he squeezed in among the big guys and got a it done. Tip. Yes. Darrell Arthur picks up his first foul, and that's team foul number three in the second half on the Jayhawks. And maybe they, you, as you pointed out, they've started to trap the pick and roll or hedge hard. But then moving that screen man off so that the big guy has to get back at home and they miss the jam. Rush has the ball hitting in the back of the head. Russell Robinson right there. Three-pointer on the way, Chalmers. Really good vision by Russell Robinson. He knew Chalmers was going to spot up behind the three-point arc, and he found him. KU back on top by one. Here comes Ashley. They feed it to him early. Give it to James. Now Mason. got away with a walk on that one and actually look at Mason it. and Mason hustles again Augustine Abrams no tip back James 
The ball is in the air, tipped around. Sasha Khan comes away with it. Oh, what a battle under the glass. Now, the one positive thing for Texas is they out tough Kansas on that possession. Rush is fouled. going to be against Damian James. Chalmers and Robertson, Ron, he knows where his teammate's going to be. Robertson able to get into the paint. That, the field goal that was hit just a moment ago by Chalmers was their first field goal, Kansas' first, in six minutes. Damian James will go to the bench after picking up that foul. As hot as Rush has been, I think if you ask the Jayhawks, they'll say that the guy they want the ball in their hands in crunch time is Mario Chalmers. Remember that three last year to tie the title game in regulation? Chalmers! Yep, he loves the big stage. He's one of those guys that works in the background and just comes jumping out of the bushes. 23 points for Chalmers. Four-point lead, KU. Augustine, unlucky in the shot. He did everything but go down. And a foul is going to be called on Pittman. And Mario Chalmers, young man, was a McDonald's All-American from Anchorage, Alaska. Look at his stroke. Now conversely, for Texas in the second half, one of 12 from the field. And I think Bill Self had a little talking to with his team, but it's hard to expect these teams would stay this high. Bounce pass inside the pond, short on the shot. Well, it's hard to get around Big Dexter Pittman, Ron. They thought they had a duck in there where they could go in at Pittman, and he held his ground nicely. <laughs> like moving around the condo. Three-pointer. Count him. Out of the wing. Chalmers got another one. Well, Texas caught a bad, bad break because when A.J. made the three, he fell down. Good presence of mind by Kansas to push it right back at him. Three-point lead, Jayhawks. 12 minutes, 34 seconds left in our ballgame. Actually, in the corner, it's a two. Here we go again. One-point game at the other way of Collins has it blocked. Oh, was that Pittman, Ron? It was Pittman. I was unsighted partially by Curtis Shaw, the referee, but it was uh, the big fella, the all-299 pounds. One thing about both of these teams, the coaches develop these young big guys nicely. You think back to Connor Jackson going against Wayne Simeon. Connor actually having to guard Aldridge every day. Darnell Jackson. And the foul is against one Manning, Holly Rowe. Well, we've talked about it all year, Darnell Jackson having a monster senior season. But, guys, he put the work in in the offseason to do so. He has been just a role player off the bench, no one they really looked for. But in the offseason, he lost 20 pounds, worked hard in the weight room, and then he was playing every single day at Oklahoma City University. He said, hey, I stayed on the court eight, nine hours just trying to get better. I don't know if there's a player in the country that's had a better senior season or a more improved player than Darnell Jackson. So Holly, he, it's a, really a metamorphosis, if you will. Yes. He, he's just, his averages in the past and what he's done this season have been uh, marvelous. Plus, fact, as a team leader, everything that he's done, he has uh, been exemplary. And if you think of all the Jayhawks, Ron, he's probably had the most consistent season from start to finish. Yeah. You, you know you're going to get 12 points and 7 rebounds every single night from him. Abrams ran into traffic problems, brought it back out. Oh, this is a great matchup right now. Collins will pick up the foul. Now he picked up the foul because DJ Augustine is so smart as Collins picks up his second that as soon as there's contact, take a look now. This is a good acting job, and I mean this in a positive way. Watch the contact and watch the grimace by Augustine. He sells the foul nicely. 
think he uh, on the side should go into marketing. Huh? <laughs> I think someone's going to be marketing him for the next 10, 12 well, years. I know you're right. Abrams lost it, but lost it right back to Augustine. Augustine put the man on his backside, tried to pick up another foul, couldn't get it, and KU on the run, rush for three. Well, he made a nice catch too because Sharon Collins threw that ball down by his ankles. Okay, Ron, here we go again. Rick Barnes giving a flat call, moving his hand sideways. We'll find out exactly what that means here momentarily. Oh, yeah. Flatten out the defense, go high pick and roll. Mason dumps the ball off. Darnell Jackson gets the foul. We'll take a timeout. Okay, Carl, 11-16 left in our ball game. It is a six-point lead for Kansas. Something we talked about during the timeout. I think you guys are building a graphic over it. Uh, but the number of assists to the number of shots made for Kansas, you said you've never seen it this high. Uh, we'll show you in just a couple of seconds. Yep, I'm sure it happens, but uh, we're talking about unbelievable ball movement by Kansas tonight. And I think one of the great strengths of Bill Self is to take a number of All-American, highly recruited players and have them check their egos at the door. Well, Mason gets both of the free throws. He has been part of the offensive machine for Texas, and that's not normally the case. He's got 14 points. He also he had 10 in the first nine and a half minutes of this ball game. Collins deep in the middle, dishes it off. Darnell Jackson fouled. That's Ashley. That's three. And it is against Ashley. Now, just as we went to break, Darnell Jackson picked up his third. So we're getting into that area with 10 minutes, 58 seconds left to go in the ball game, where these fouls are really going to become important as far as key people on the floor. This is the problem that Kansas presents for teams, Ron. We talked about the great shooting all night. Look at this. Yep. 21 field goals, 20 assists. And that was a great assist just now on the part of Sharon Collins. Well, now, he didn't come up with it because the basket That's didn't right. go. But, That's it's right. in, but it is perfectly indicative, as you mentioned, of the great team play. Absolutely. You see Russell Robinson now with the assignment on Augustine. Four different Jayhawks have guarded him. Augustine on the run, missed it. The tip inside by James, couldn't get it. And Collins will push it up again. Spinning, the ball blocked. Mason got it for a moment, and then Khan takes it away. And it comes out to D.J. Augustine. And on the run, Augustine misses it. And the tip out taken away by Collins. Rush. Well, that's Sharon Collins making that shot. You and I could have made that three. But Sharon Collins is the X factor in a long NCAA run by the Kansas Jayhawks. Russell Robinson picks up the foul, and we will not go away. 10-17 left in our ballgame. Well, what is that now? 21 of 22 field goals assisted. So Augustine, because that being the 17th foul against the Jayhawks, goes to the line. Texas has five team fouls. And on Robinson, that was foul number one. And I think back to Russell Robinson's freshman year. And uh, he really struggled, thought about transferring. Ron, he's got a hat in his room. That's a 1988 championship Kansas hat that's signed by Danny Manning. And he's, and he's told Danny Manning, I want one of those hats for myself this year. One that says 2008, 20 years later. Augustine gets them both. And now DJ has 20 points. 25 for Chalmers, 18 for Rush, 23 points, I mean, for uh, Jackson. Here's Collins. Look at that 
matchup. Abrams and Rush. Is that something? And then a screen by Arthur. <laughs> the little guy disappeared there, didn't he? Rick Barnes thinks he's really improved defensively. Collins does it pump. Gets the shot up. He'll get the follow and miss it. And James will come down and secure the rebound. Yeah, that's the easiest opportunity Sharon Collins will have all day. Shot not there, tipped out, and that's Darnell Jackson who hit it last. Bill Self breathed a sigh of relief because DJ Augustine was wide open off that little screen. Six point lead, KU. About to hit nine and a half minutes left in our ball game. But on the baseline, Rush does a nice job of taking away that baseline drive by Mason. Augustine looks up at the clock, plenty of time, 25 seconds and count. Abrams for three. How about that release? That's a guy, Ron, that you can never give him any separation from the defender. Russell Robinson gets it off to Rush. Back to Robinson. Chalmers. Ball tipped out by Jackson. It'll be Texas basketball. A.J. Abrams, he knows if he works without the ball, Augustine will find him. Keep your eye on Chalmers. There's the separation now. And then here's a little more separation. Robinson does not get back in time. Well, we have told the story so often. A.J. Abrams' father is much, much larger than his son. But to make sure he could shoot over taller people, he kept taking him to the driveway every day and used a broom to teach him how to arc a shot. And it has worked absolute magic. James for three. There's his dad right there. You know, Damian James doesn't need the broom because he's six foot seven, <laughs> but he's got just as much of a sniper ability. And we're tied again, this time at 64. You know, I think the Kansas fans are stunned right now because it's pretty quiet in here. You know, the, the best thing that's happening, though, know, and both coaches feel this way, I promise you, this is definitely a partisan house in favor of KU as Chalmers misses and James rebounds. But the respect that is being gained for the Texas Longhorns by these people who are as good basketball fans as you have in yes. America, the KU fans are looking on saying, hey, it's not because we're making errors. They're matching our abilities stride for stride. Well, this has become a great rivalry. Abram. Oh my goodness. And it's hard to guard because there's a split second when the defenders are going to switch that he's open. Take a look at this, Ron. This is almost unguardable. You know you're going to switch the handoff, okay? He knows it's coming. Too late. You got to get back quicker. Twelve minutes. Okay, Carl, thanks very much as Sasha Khan takes it to the hoop and actually may have just picked up foul number four. And if he has, Ron, that's outstanding coaching because Bill Self went right at him. So we'll take a timeout. 740 left in our game. 67 Texas, 64 KU. Is presented by Phillips 66. Gasoline specifically formulated to clean fuel injectors, increase performance, and above all, help maximize mileage. And in part by Subway. Subway celebrates Jared's 10th anniversary of losing 245 pounds. Subway, eat fresh. So with 740 left in our championship game, it's the Longhorns leading by three. And uh, the fact that Texas has been to the championship game several times before, but they have never won one. Uh, it is uh, that's you talk about what's at stake today. Rick Barnes would love nothing better to finally get one. Yeah, I agree. And you know, when you think about these three teams competing in the last three Big 12 championships, that has only happened one time in basketball history that two teams have met from the same conference three straight times. Connecticut Pittsburgh 2002 through 2004. And 
and let's check in quickly with Holly Rowe. Well, guys, the Texas coaching staff had a little huddle there. They were trying to discuss whether they should take Connor Ashley out. He's got those foul problems. They decided to take him out and put in Dexter Pittman in this situation. But Rick Barnes gave him a talking to in the huddle, and he said, Dexter, here's what I need from you. You have to guard for us and rebound for us. I need you to be a monster on the boards, and that's it. Okay, Holly. Uh, Con missed the first one. By the way, Texas is 12 of 30. I beg your pardon. They are 12 of 22 from beyond the arc. KU is 13 of 21, and then 12 uh, made three-pointers as a UT record in the Big 12 championship game. They had 11 against Missouri. And we're getting close to closing time, Ron, for D.J. Augustine. Texas very good down the stretch of games. Abrams on the run. Tough, tough shot from that angle. And you know he's shooting a high, high percentage now from two-point land. 15 Not, points for him. Yep, 49% inside the arc. That's such an improvement over his first couple of years. And that's important because when you're a three-point shooter, they, the defenses chase you off that three-point line. Augustine commented yesterday after the ball game as Khan is fouled by Dexter Pittman. He missed the shot, but he'll go to the line for a couple. Let me tell you why this may not be a bad thing. Sasha Khan shoots him in the mid 50s from the foul line, and he can, Rick Barnes can waste a couple fouls. So he is first, Pittman. you're right. That's right. Good point. And remember, they're playing without Gary Johnson, who is day to day. Will not play today, the 6 7 freshman from Houston. Well, Khan normally very smooth with his uh, free throws as you look at Gary Johnson having to sit out injured just uh, over five yep. minutes into that ball game yesterday against Oklahoma. See I'd, I'd foul him every time he gets the ball near the basket. He's 57 percent on the year and as long as Pittman and Langman and Chapman are not in foul trouble go ahead and take one. We outside Abrams that's an air ball. Pittman tries for it and crashes into the photographers and it, it's going to be KU basketball. That was not quite like the parting of the sea when uh, Shaq went into the, the stands the other night, but it was darn close. It was close. <laughs> and, if, and if you're Rick Barnes right now, strategically, you're trying to figure out how long you can stay with Pittman until you need to bring Ashley back with his four fouls. Chalmers has the ball knocked away and a bump by Chalmers to keep Mason from getting to the basketball very wise. That's one of those plays inside the play, Ron, and they were coming right at us, so you had a good view of it. Uh, I was bailing out. It was like Shaq was coming. Trust me. Been there, done that this year. Six minutes, 20 seconds left to play in the championship. Texas by four. Kansas, no field goals in the last 350. But get that, Arthur wipes out the drought. They almost went four minutes without scoring, but they close it back to two with that jam by Durrell. Well, that'll be fun to watch on the replay because they've been screening rolling all night. They very rarely have slipped the screen. And that time, Durrell Arthur said bye-bye to the Texas defense. James, too much on the shot, lost it. Darnell Jackson rebounds. They got numbers, three on two. Collins got it. Well, you don't see Brandon Rush on the passing end of a three-point shot very often, but that speaks to the unselfishness of the Kansas Jayhawks. Jackson and the hustle on the rebound is what started the whole thing. Watch this pick and roll, Ron. He's going to set the screen. No, he's not. He's slipping it to the goal. And then watch Rush, the playmaking ability, and Collins, the spark. 70 to 69. Now KU on top by one. And we're down to 540 left to play in our championship. And a reminder tonight following Big 12 championship basketball on ESPN, 5 o'clock Eastern. ESPN U Bracketology preparing you for who might get in and who might be out at 6 o'clock Eastern. Sports Center lets you know the brackets as they are announced. 7 o'clock Eastern. Uh, cast breaks down the regions with another helping. Uh, of ESPNU Bracketology. Coming up tonight at 5, 6, and 7 Eastern Time. Well, there'll be a lot of gnashing of teeth as you can see what's been done here today amongst some teams, but credit the basketball committee. They put hundreds and thousands of hours into work 
And it will pay off here in the next couple hours. Augustine on the run. Not there. Tipped by James, and he tipped it out of bounds. And Rick Barnes wanted a foul on the play, saying Augustine got shoved, but there will be none. Ron, this finish is why I think the committee already has decided where to put these two teams. And I don't think Rick Barnes would mind at all being a two-seed in the South. You think that's where they're going? Well, I, that's my guess, but I don't think he really cares about the number one seed. And take a look at the S-curve we showed you early. This is just an example, okay? The two first two lines. The S-curve works like this. So if Memphis is considered the fourth best team in the field, Texas the fifth, Tennessee the sixth, Georgetown the seventh, and Kansas, in my mind, will be number one in the Midwest. The foul was called on Mason. It is his first. And it's team foul number eight, but the front end of the one and one was missed, and Texas dodges one here. Still a one-point ball game. And one, more, and one more thing about bracketology. I thought Jimmy, Jimmy Dykes had a very compelling uh, argument for Tennessee as a number one seed. Augustine, they closed the door on him. Could not continue the drive. Okay, Chalmers on Abrams. Puts the ball on his hip and scores. Did he walk? I don't know if he did, but I'll tell you, that was a magician the way he hit the ball from Rush. <laughs> Looks like a quarterback carrying out a fake. <laughs> Play action. 71-70. Now it's Texas. Under four and a half minutes to play. That's the 13th lead change. And that three-pointer by Cotton is well off the mark. But the long carom and KU gets a new 35. And you see Texas stays in the 2-3 zone. Who's going to be willing to be the sniper from the perimeter? Arthur, turnaround jumper. Got it. Another lead change. Jayhawks back on top. And that's a great job of getting the ball to the middle of the lane. We told you. Kansas moves it as well as anybody against that zone. I mean, all 16,000 plus on their feet, and they are cheering. They have been treated to one heck of a basketball game this afternoon. Back and forth, the Longhorns and the Jayhawks, who will win the title for 08. Mason, strong to the hoop, back of the wing. Abrams couldn't get it. Tipped out of bounds, touched last by Texas. KU basketball. So let's take a timeout. 72-71, KU, 3.35 left. Okay, Carl, Georgia needs to uh, schedule more three-game sets in a day and a half. Uh, it might help them. To show you how well this game has been played, look at this number on the screen. 25 made field goals by Kansas and 24 assists. On the other side of the ledger, Texas may be down by one. They have not shot well in the second half. They only have three turnovers for the entire contest. And you're talking about a high-pressure atmosphere. Both teams, I think, are proven what we've seen all year that they're among the elite five or six teams in college basketball. Fran, as we hit the three minute 20 mark of this ball game, is here where that added number that KU has on the bench, does this where it really comes in handy because of stamina over UT's shoulder bench? I think it helps, but as long as actually stays out of foul trouble, the last four minutes will not be a fatigue factor. Ron. Rush guys for that rebound as Chalmers missed it. One of the few misses that Chalmers has had all day. Well, remember, when you shoot wrong versus the zone, the ball's going to bounce out wrong, and you must stay alert if you're the Texas guards. Rush wanted the three, passed it up. Arthur, turn around. Short comes down into the hands of Ashley, and the Texas Longhorns will move it up the floor. Well, this was that calculated risk. Rick Barnes said he would stay with the zone in the second half, and it slowed Kansas down somewhat. You can see Collins trying to look. He needs uh, rear view mirrors to check and see where the screen's coming from. And he doesn't want to get racked. Nobody is there. Now here comes Ashley. Sets the screen for him back the other direction. Off to Ashley. Mason, crossover, back outside. Damian James, line drive, shot it very low. Not much arc on that one. And KU, loud pass, a little too high for Darnell Jackson. And Collins. That's a hustle play. Yep, it went off Texas. That's an incredible play, Ron. He not only made the alley-oop pass, although ill-advised, he chased his own mistake down. 
And then he throws it off A.J. Abrams. So it'll be KU basketball, 2.02 left on the clock. A one-point lead by the Jayhawks. I mentioned that Sharon Collins is the punt returner for Texas. Kansas, excuse me, he's going to run a few back. He'll fumble a couple. It'll make things happen. Screen comes by Jackson. Rush over the middle. Chalmers for three. Got it. Four-point lead. Remember, he was the MVP of this Big 12 tournament as a freshman. He loves these situations. Rick Barnes calls the play that he wants. Augustine looks for someone to pass to. Plenty of time on the shot clock as Mason holds up, misses the jumper. Collins with a rebound, and he was fouled by Damian James. 126 left. KU will go to the free throw line, and they lead it by four. Well, Mario Chalmers wide open. Guess what? Another assist for Kansas. Brandon Rush, you don't think he does it all? Chalmers calmly knocks down a big one. 28 points for Mario Chalmers, and that foul on Damian James, his third. And it's his ninth three-pointer of the Big 12 tournament, and that ties a record. This is still a one-in-one -one situation. Ninth team foul on the Longhorns. Collins sends it on the way. He got it. Ron Franklin, Fran Frischella, Holly Rowe, and glad to have you along from the Sprint Center in Kansas City, Missouri. What a championship finale here between the Jayhawks and the Longhorns. Again, they have locked up, and it's been one really good basketball game. As Collins gets both, and now the Longhorns have got to do some stuff, and they're down by six, and 120 now on the clock. And I think D.J. Augustine has got to start to take the game in his own hands. Wants the screen, missed the shot, and a foul is going to be called, I believe, on Darnell Jackson. And Texas will shoot just the one and one. Darnell Jackson picks up his fourth foul, and that is team foul number eight on the Jayhawks. So actually, with a must hit on the first one, we only have 109 left in the ball game. On the way, and he got it. These are important free throws, Ron, because if actually cuts it to four, you don't necessarily have to foul right here. You may be able to go one more possession. But if you're going to foul, you've got to know who you want to foul. Actually gets them both. Ian Mooney will check into the lineup, and this is for him that tells to you, pick up a foul. That tells you exactly what they're going to do. Four-point game, Kansas, 69 seconds left. And Mooney lines up against Chalmers. He stepped across the end wow. line. John Higgins says he turns it over. He stepped over the line. Boy, because is... of the two main free throws, he could move, he, that's right. but not across. Now let's watch Brandon Rush right here. Take a look now. You'll see. Uh, it's hard to tell, but it, it, sure he did. Because There's John Higgins. Now you have to understand this. There's no line on the court, Ron. So the, the wood part here, this is all in. There's no line. So once, once that foot steps onto the court, it's automatically a violation. Well, that was close. You notice in some arenas, they have the white line, yeah. okay? Anything, and, and they do this because the, the black part is obviously off the court. That's the point I'm making. So here's the situation. 69 seconds still remaining, and a moment ago, a four-point lead by Kansas, and they had the ball. Now the Longhorns have the basketball. No time came off the clock. And you don't have to play desperation here. Get it in and get a good shot. And 
And if you can't get A.J. Abrams an open look, your best offense right now is to create something at the rim and see if you can draw a foul and stop the clock. Kansas still only has four guys on the floor. Russell Robinson is going to come back out, and Darnell Jackson looks as though he will go on one knee and wait in front of the scorer's table. I'm surprised that Mooney is in right now, Ron. That's the thing. You know, I'm, I'm surprised. This is amazing that he's still in the game. D.J. Augustine out to Mooney. Augustine backs up. Long three. Too hard off the back iron. Rebounded by Chalmers, and he gets it out. And KU with a two-on-one, and Rush fouled by Abrams. 54.8 seconds left. I have to say this. I don't think they needed to take the desperation three. They had plenty of time on the clock to go to the rim, and D.J. Augustine was set on shooting the deep ball. Kansas 15 three-pointers is a Big 12 tournament record. And I think that's what Rick Barnes is telling him right there. Connor Ratchley prepares to check back in, as does Darnell Jackson. Rush hits the first and makes it a five-point lead. Now, Rick Barnes has won 445 games. In fact, full disclosure, you know I work for him. But he's got a reason he left Mooney in the game on offense. And, but I don't know what it was. Rush bends the knees, rattles it in and out. So five-point lead, 50 seconds left in the championship. KU on top. Here's Abrams. Back to James. Augustine drives it to the corner, throws it away. Stolen by Chalmers. Chalmers has done a little bit of everything today. He's got 28 points, and that steal right there may be his biggest of the season, and he's had some huge ones. And he has. He leads the big 12 as he usually does in steals. You're talking about a guy that has stepped up big since his freshman year. He loves this type of situation. Did you see Bill Shelf and what he was doing? He was putting his fingers each side to a temple, saying, think, use your head, play smart. Chalmers, this is the first time he's been to the free throw line today. The folks, there's a reason, because he's hit almost every shot that That's he's right. shot, and he has not been fouled, and he hasn't had to go there. 29 points for him now, and make it 30. Jackson out, Darrell Arthur in, 40.1 seconds showing on the clock. You know, we've said this many times, Ron, this team is so deep and so balanced, seven different leading scorers this year, but there's one guy that all of the Jayhawks count on to step up big, Chalmers. Well, Chalmers will pick up the foul there as Mason was simply trying to blow by him and get a quick two. <laughs> Seven point ball game, and now they elect to bring Jackson back into the ball game, and it will be Russell Robinson going to the bench. So, Texas, I mean, KU going very large on this one, and with a leaper like Rush, they were extremely large as far as gaining rebounds. And that's what they want to do. They want to put their big team in. Here you see Ronnie Chalmers, the director of basketball operations, his high school coach, Mario's high school coach. And, uh, what? A pressure player. Misses the second. Rebounded by Arthur. So the strategy paid off by Bill Self of going big inside to make sure that he got any missed free throw. That's a great point because he knew Texas would foul right away anyway, so you don't need five ball handlers out there. The last Texas field goal, friend, came at the 442 mark. Right now, we have 35.2 seconds left, so over four minutes of a drought for the Longhorns at a really tough time in the contest. Coming up next, ESPNU Bracketology, presented by Staples. Tell you what, there are going to be some dangerous teams I would not want to see in this tournament, and they're not all the big names. Now, Ron, here's what's happening. By rule, you can take as long as you want 
to put a contact in. It's different than an injury. An injury, you have to sub for the player right away. But if you read the rule book, you know that the officials will give a player as long as he needs to to put a contact in. And that's what Rick Barnes and Justin Mason were doing. That's why the boos. And they, they, they booed, and Rick Barnes turned around and looked at the crowd like, what are you booing for? <laughs> well, they the don't know on? the rule. <laughs> and that's an obscure one, by the way. Oh, my. Because we know if it was an injury, they would have to suffer him relatively quickly. Rush and Chalmers. Career in the Big 12 Championship, 8 and 0. Oh. Arthur, second one, got that one as well. Now this is a very, very dangerous Kansas team as they head into NCAA tournament time. We talked about how unselfish, how balanced they have all the ingredients to win it all. Eight point ball game at just over 30 seconds to play. And now Curtis Shaw, who is the referee, looking up at the clock. We've seen this happen a couple times. Haven't but we? you know they rid the problem. We haven't had this first time today. What the problem was, the batteries in those packs were not good, and so they put in new packs. And it been no problems today. So they ran the radio shack quickly. Yeah. Ashley not there. Collins with the rebound, fouled by Augustine, and that's going to do it. 25.4 seconds. They'll come to the line to shoot, and they can make it a 10-point ball game. And Rick Barnes looks on. What a tough situation. Again, it looks as though Rick is going to leave here empty-handed. And, you know, he may be playing a team that you know, certainly a lot of people think could be in the Final Four. Also good enough to win the whole thing. Well, I think both of these teams have proven throughout the season that they're one of they're two of the elite, elite six or seven teams in college basketball. Take a look at this, Ron. You talk about Kansas. What do they have? Experience, yes. Depth, yes. Balance, yes. Defense and coaching, but this is the big one. Hunger. Remember this. They only have three NCAA wins in their last three seasons, and all came a year ago. That's the big question. It's not whether they can win Big 12 titles. It's can Bill Self get this Jayhawk team to the Final Four. Tough thing about this one right here is Rockchuck Jayhawk. The champ begins. Abrams with a long three. That's an air ball. People are going to look at the score who didn't watch the game and say, well, hey, KU wins again, and it, uh, they won it by 10 points. This was one heck of a hotly contested basketball game until about the last four minutes and 20 seconds. Oh, you're exactly right. This was high, high level of skill level today. The assists and the lack of turnovers, I think, prove that. The Kansas Jayhawks are going to win the title for 2008, and they close the game on a 14 to 3 run to do it. The coaches and the players shaking hands. DJ Augustine being hugged by Danny Manning there, then Mr. Chalmers. And down comes the confetti. The streamers, as is the case this year. <laughs> We're getting rained on right now. Mario Chalmers, what a ball game. 30 points that he had, and we'll try to get a complete line on him. And I don't think anybody has scored higher than 28 points this year for Kansas, Ron. I think Rush did it yesterday with 28. And let's go to Holly Rowe. Holly? Mario, you'd only averaged eight points a game tournament but in the first half alone you had 17 why the sense of urgency for you I mean my teammates looked at me they said I need to have a big game today and uh, I just try to come out and try to help my team win you've never lost in this championship what does this mean to you to get another one uh, it feels great I mean Texas is a great team uh, it's three years in a row that we battled for them with the championship and uh, say it was fortunate to come out with another victory all right thanks Mario thank you okay Holly Brandon Rush MVP of the tournament and Mario Chalmers DJ Augustine, A.J. Abrams, and Damian James, three from Texas, two from KU on the all-tournament team. Final score, Kansas 84-74. Coming up next, Bracketology pretended by Staples. I brought Franklin for Fran for Shell and Holly Roll and our entire crew. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. So long, everybody, from Kansas City, Missouri.
Just over 45 minutes away from revealing the brackets. This much we know. Andy Katz reporting the opening round game will be Mount St. Mary's and Coppin State in Dayton on Tuesday, about 70 miles apart. They will get the tournament started. To win a third straight Big 12 title. Jayhawks up by five when Brandon Rush, becoming their go to guy, gave him a little pass fake, hit the three, and then Digger Sharon Collins starts the offense. This is the go to guy. He's healthy, he can penetrate, they're afraid to dish. One extra pass, and they hit the big three. That's his job description because they got points in the paint in the perimeter game. And that was Rush hitting the first two threes, and Bob, you talked about how difficult to guard DJ Augustine is. I don't think there's any player in the country more difficult to guard than Augustine, and he played very, very well today, but it just wasn't enough from an overall consideration. Augustine had 18 in the first half. In the second half, Mario Chalmers, he just started to lift off Hubert. He got warm. Well, he was lights out from the perimeter. He had 30 points, terrific in transition. You shoot the basketball, and you see Kansas. When they get in transition, they can take it to the hole and knock down three-point jump shot. Hubert, his shooting reminded me of you. <laughs> I think he's a better shooter, coach. <laughs> Augustine. Shoot as much, though. <laughs> Augustine missed the floater, and this time DJ starting the break but couldn't finish it. Now the other way. Way. Jerron Collins again, and it seems to be a very good idea to find Brandon Rush. Bottom. Kansas up by eight. Under 10 minutes to go. Here come the Longhorns. A.J. Abrams, who shot it very well in the semifinals in seven threes against Oklahoma. Texas within three. Augustine splits the defense. Damian James, who can step out, gets another one to tie it. Next Texas possession, Abrams again. This is a 11-0 run. Abrams hits that big three. Now they're up three with seven plus to go. Now it's a two-point game, and Kansas falling behind the Jay. They come through. Collins knocking down the three, and the Darrell Arthur inside. Well, they've got so many different weapons. Kansas has seven or eight guys that can really hurt you, and they've got seven guys that have scored over 20 points in a single game. A lot of different options for this Kansas offense. You know, they locked down their defense, too. They held Texas four minutes plus without scoring. Chalmers hitting the three, and then Chalmers Jay on defense. Well, he's one of the best defenders in the country, and I think you could make a great argument for him being the national defender. Defensive player of the year with the way he impacts the game. He's very disruptive on the defensive end. They can't do a job guarding man to man. They got to play that 2 3 zone in Kansas. It's headed up inside and outside. A 14 3 run to finish the game, and Kansas, the Big 12 tournament champ, once again. Chalmers with a career day. 30 points. This guy was shooting almost 47% on the season, being very judicious when he shot it from behind the arc. 47% from three, I mean. Augustine only two points in the second half, but he did have nine assists. Texas going to have a very high seed going into the tournament. Kansas probably going to be a number one seed. A little self-examination with Holly Rowe. You guys were up by one point, and you told your team in the huddle, this is where players make plays. What did you do from there? Well, we played great down the stretch. You know, Brandon stepped on the end line, but other than that, about as well as we could execute down the stretch. And, you know, I'll tell you what, Texas can beat anybody anytime. They played fabulous today. And, you know, we happened to make shots. They made shots. It was a great college game. I know that you wanted better perimeter defense. How do you feel your team turned that around in the second half? Well, we, we didn't stop them, but we certainly slowed them down a little bit more. And, you know, this game, you know, we, we knew it would be a fast place in the first half, and we thought it slowed down a little bit in the second half, and that's what happened. I know you have no control over the seedings, but what would you like to see from here, Coach? Well, I, I don't know. I, I, you're right, I have no control, but uh, there's not a... a there's not many teams in the country better than Texas, if any. So, so uh, uh, I don't know if we'll get the one C, but I think our guys are deserving. You've talked a lot about energy. How do you like how your team's energy is right now? Well, we played pretty well in the tournament. Offensively, we really played well, with the exception of the first game. And, you know, I, I, I'm a firm believer. Uh, energy creates defense, and our defense hadn't been as good, but uh, we'll get it right this week. Thanks, Coach. Thanks. <laughs> Leave them a little something else to strive for. Kansas with a 10-point victory over a Texas team, by the way, and assuming Kansas does get a number one seed, the Longhorns are going to have three regular season victories over, uh, well, I take that back, two regular season victories over likely number one seeds and another one over Tennessee who will probably be a two. You see what they've been able to do. And uh, Coach, Self talked about the way they passed the ball. 24 of their first 25 field goals, Kansas had an assist. What does that indicate to you? Well, I think they, first of all, they're very unselfish. Second, 
secondly, they have really good movement. They have that many assists. And thirdly, the people with the ball are really looking for somebody. They're not looking to put it on the floor. They're looking for somebody to get open. And as, as uh, uh, Digger has mentioned, uh, when those guards drive, they score a lot of buckets by getting rid of the ball when somebody comes to pick them up. And it's a very unselfish team. Does he remind you, Collins, of what A.C. Law did for Texas A&M last year, the go-to guy last four minutes of the game, because he can close games like Law? Yeah, no question. Law may have been a little bit better shooter, but I think he probably does more things with the ball going toward the basket than Law did. One of the things I really respect about Kansas is we, we've always talked about, well, they don't really have a go-to guy. Who do they give the ball to down the stretch and all that stuff? And I, I think I said this about Florida last year, and I meant it, and I, I think it applies to Kansas, is their go-to guy is the open man. And your stat right. on, on assists, was, was really important and indicative of that. They find the open man, they get the ball to him, whether it takes an extra pass, they, they, they will pass up a good shot to get a better shot. Very good from a defensive player. <laughs> Very good. Because that guy, that guy with the ball is just going and he's looking. And when he sees what's there and it's open, bang, there it See, goes. See, and, and the problem was when Hubert played, that, he, that one extra pass, when it came to him, he wasn't going to pass it to the next guy. Yeah, but one I made it. <laughs> you know, the is to make the shot. Why waste time if you're going to put it in the bottom of the net, right, my friend? Hey, you know, we've talked about who's better all season, Kansas or Texas. They're both very high-level teams, as Bill Self alluded to. What you saw from Kansas, this team better equipped as opposed to Texas to make a deep run, maybe win a national championship? You know, I, I do. I think when you look at Kansas, they're a terrific defensive play, a t defensive team. They create turnovers. They get into the fast break. They're unselfish with the basketball. And one of the things I like about them offensively, yeah, Mario Chalmers had 30 points. He was lights out from the perimeter. But they can score in two different ways. They can score out on the perimeter. They can penetrate into the lane. And they can throw the ball down low on the post to Sasha Khan, Darnell Jackson, Darrell Arthur, Cole Aldridge coming off the bench. This team goes goes 10 deep with Roderick Stewart. So you're looking at a deep team, an experienced team, and they can play on both ends of the floor. That's the key, I think, is when you look at Texas, they don't have the front line that Kansas has. And we were out there to watch them play against Kansas State. You really see how physical Kansas can be. The perimeter game with Chalmers and Rush, and now you got Collins on that point. The fact is, those four guys inside, Jay, they just can maintain contact on the boards, get points in the paint, and start their transition game with defensive rebound. Well, and you saw how they dominated the glass against Texas. It's not like Texas isn't a good rebounder. Right. Team with Damian James and Connor Ashley and some of the perimeter strength that they have, but they dominated the glass. You know, Texas has to play a lot of zone defense, which doesn't give them the pressure on half court that Kansas man-to-man -man defense gives. And I think what Hubert said about defense is really true. They're a very, very good defensive team, better than Texas, better than most anybody. And that, and I, I think, will be a tremendous edge for them as they move on into the tournament. All right, so the Jayhawks, in all likelihood, have now wrapped up a number one seed. Still a little over a half hour away from finding that out for sure. And joining us now is our bracketologist from ESPN.com, Joe Winardi. So, Joe, since we last spoke on a college game day Saturday morning, Tennessee has lost, Kansas won the Big 12. Where do your four number one seeds stand right now? I think the top three guys are unchanged with Carolina to the east, UCLA, of course, out west, Memphis in the south, and I believe the committee will put Kansas now on the top line as the number one seed in the Midwest. And that means a couple winners and a couple losers here. Obviously, the Jayhawks are winners, and so are the Texas Longhorns if they end up number two in the south with a regional in Houston. Not good news for Memphis as they'd be the Texas opponent in Houston, and obviously not good news for Tennessee, which I'm sure felt that they had done enough to earn a number one seed line. All right, Joe, that might indeed cause a little bit of squawking if Memphis has to play a game in uh, number two seed's home state to make it to the Final Four. Tigers have made it to the Elite Eight the last couple of years and been unable to get over the hump. We'll hear from Joe throughout the rest of the night. Okay, you heard Joe's number one seeds. Are you in agreement with those? Yeah, that's what. Yeah, actually, those are the four that I've had all year long, frankly, because I think they're the four best teams, and they've proven it out over the course of the season. I said that November 6th, and here it is. It comes a reality check because everybody thought maybe Duke would be a one seed, maybe Tennessee would be a one seed. Not until today when everybody takes care of the business Saturday and Sunday, the one seeds still show up as we saw preseason. I don't think it makes any difference. I, I, I think I that your one you. seed, two seed, three seed, go play. It, to me, it, the seeding makes absolutely no difference, and there's so much uh, made out of it that uh, I've never been able to understand it, but then... You know, there are a lot of things I But if you're in Indianapolis <laughs> for a regional and you're the number one seed in the Midwest from Bloomington, they shipped you out west, you wouldn't want to be in that regional in Indianapolis? There are a lot of things about Indianapolis that I don't like. <laughs> <laughs> a 
<laughs> final four trip to Indianapolis? No, I think the final four trip you're going to play. You, you, that steakhouse you're gonna, you like that in Indianapolis? You're going to, you're going to, no, it's that one's over in Nashville. You're going to have to, <laughs> you're going to have to play your way no matter where you are. And that's why I think that too much of an issue is All right, is let's go back to seating. the Big Ten. Let's go back to a few years ago. <laughs> Illinois plays in Chicago, goes to Indianapolis, goes to St. Louis to the final four. That's just a nice bus trip. No planes. They got to the final tired. four because they were a great basketball team. Yeah. But well, still, to travel, we would have gotten to the final four. Being in the south, and it helps. It, it helps. You, you need you Catholics need a better travel agent. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you, need a, you need a Methodist travel so, agent. So Carolina, <laughs> Carolina right now has earned playing the first, second round of rally, going to Charlotte, and almost like we're going to San Antonio. Yeah, Huber if wants they to win, plane. Huber wants to get on the plane. He'll play anywhere, right? Hey, we'll talk a little bit about teams <laughs> Still that are win sweating it out right now. <laughs> teams on the bubble and one's keeping a very close eye on what's happening in Atlanta. Georgia trying to use Digger's phrase, steal a bit. And Clemson was trying to steal an ACC title against North Carolina in the ACC Tournament Championship game this afternoon. And Illinois in the same boat as the Bulldogs of Georgia trying to take a bit away from somebody and play their way in by winning the games no matter where they are, Hubert, right? We'll be back after this.